Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to our third edition of Mantle Matters, Faith and Finances, our Mantle Matters webinar where we talk about and discuss faith and finances. And tonight we want to go into talent matters, talent matters. Last week we talked about time matters. We're looking at mantle and we know that mantle is something that you that is uh, thrown around something that's thrown over you a covering and before we go into this word for today uh, let's go into and have a uh, word of prayer father God we come before you Lord God humbly as we know how father God we thank you and we praise you for this time that you have both allotted and allowed for the purpose Lord God of hearing from you downloading your principles into us oh God that we might live the kingdom life that you have ordained by taking control, by being responsible for our time, our talent, and our treasure, that we may use those things purposefully for your purposes and your pleasure, Father, and not ours alone. Lord God, we come before you, Lord God, just anxious to hear from you, Lord God, needy for this information, needy for knowledge on high and how to apply it, the truth of your word, the truth of your kingdom into our lives that we might secure kingdom results. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that on tonight you will begin to move lack out of the way and cause your abundance to stay. These things we ask and we pray and we give you glory for all that you're about to do. Now think with my mind and speak with my mouth those truths that you want us, your precious people, to hear, to know, and to apply. These things we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Welcome again to another edition of Mantle Matters. I am Pastor Philip Lowe. Good to be in the house tonight to break down some word to you. As you know, my background is uh, from Wall Street. I went from Wall Street to Main Street, uh, began founding in, uh, businesses and starting businesses, as well as helping others to start business uh, and businesses. Um, my background, currently I am pastor and founder of Perspective Matters Ministries. Uh, prior to that, I was president and CEO and founder of Exodus Capital Management, a full-service wealth management firm headquartered in Beverly Hills, California. Uh, also concurrent to that, I was chairman and co-founder of Alert Staffing, which was a national staffing firm. Uh, we were in 18 states, ranked number 13 on the Black Enterprise Top 100 list between 1996 and about 2003. Uh, before that, I had a financial planning firm that I founded. I was president and CEO of that in uh, Los Angeles, California, Low and Associates Financial Group. We had offices in Dallas and Atlanta as well. Uh, prior to that, I was a financial advisor with Prudential Financial and also worked as a financial analyst for Capital EMI Records, as well as Revlon Incorporated in New York City, as well as AIG on Wall Street, American International Group. So that shows you a little bit about where I've come from, and now I have, uh, or I am, settling into the role of pastor. Uh, so I come with a bit of a different uh, background and influence, not so much from seminary per se, but from uh, Wall Street and business. Now, what we talk about when we talk about mantle matters, of course, is the word mantle, which in the Greek means that which is thrown around. It referred to a outer garment, a cloak, if you will, that went on on the outside of someone's uh, clothing. And it was something that was typically just thrown around or thrown on them, uh, perhaps even over the shoulder. And I'm going to tell you something. There's something that we throw around like nobody's business, and that tends to be three things, time, talent, and 
treasure. Now, there is a word that's spoken of and only used concerning uh, Elijah, the prophet Elijah, specifically uh, with his mantle. There was a word, adareth, like ad, ad. And he used his mantle. He used it in a peculiar and peculiar particular kind of way. He even used his mantle. He thrashed it down in the water in the Jordan, and the water split in two, allowing him and his protege, his partner in the ministry, Elisha, to walk through the Jordan River on dry ground because of the power of his mantle. He used his mantle, something that others threw around. He used it purposefully, and because he used it purposefully, it served kingdom purposes. All right? So what we want to do is follow in the example in the footsteps of Elijah. Elijah, who did not see death but was taken up by God, literally raptured while he was alive because he walked so closely and intimately with the Lord and pleased him with his time, his talent, and his treasure. Well, mantle does matter. It matters to the Lord. And we want to talk about the mantle of time, talent, and treasure. Last week, we dealt with the issue of time, something that we tend to throw around that we need to be more purposeful and precise with. If we first are purposeful and precise with our time, recognizing that it's not ours, but is a gift from God, literally every moment of time is a gift gift, then we would return that present in the present while it's present to the one who gave us the gift, which is God, the Lord God himself. How much time are you giving your Savior, the one who is the giver of time, recognizing that time, in fact, is life. Many of us are too busy chasing paychecks when we need to be chasing. All we need to be chasing is the Lord. He will fill your treasury. And he will give you, if you honor him with your time, he'll give you more time. The one thing that people, if they're fortunate enough to be on a deathbed, all are craving for. They don't want more money. They don't want more men or more women. Uh, They don't want more of anything but more time. Time. Have you ever thought about the money that you're leaving on the table each day? Well, the targeted use of your mantle, your time, your talent, and your treasure will lead you to the other side of poverty and lack, to prosperity and abundance. That's what we're trying to get at. You see, there is perhaps nothing that we purposely throw around more than our time, our talent, and treasure. Look, if you change how you use your mantle, you will change your life. Uh, our our uh, objective is to uh, waste not and want not. We're looking to try to monetize our mantle, monetize your mantle, monetizing your time, your talent, and your treasure. Can you imagine if you had a dollar for every second of the day that you were alive and moving about, just think if you could capture time and monetize it. Uh, What we're talking about is uh, being profitable with your time, your talent, and your treasure, because that is precisely what God wants us to be, is profitable concerning his kingdom. If you give him the benefit of your time, your talent, and your treasure, he will squeeze all of the good out of it on your behalf to glorify himself and to make life good for you. So you've got to give to get. Amen? Well, we're going to deal with talent matters tonight, and our text, uh, this is going to be probably a three-part series. Our text for this evening comes out of the parable of the talents, the parable of the talents. That is found in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. And before we go into the, the, the nooks and the crannies of this wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, series of of scriptures dealing with stewardship, uh, particularly over the matters of time, 
talent, and treasure, we need to really begin to examine what is talent. In this day and age, it begs of us to ask the question, if you've looked around and maybe heard any new music lately, uh, have you watched any new stuff lately, you know, uh, uh, as far as uh, comedians and such, you have to wonder today, what really counts for talent? What is talent? Well, according to the word of God, because we want to make sure that we get a biblical perspective where talent is concerned, talent in this particular teaching, Jesus uses this parable of the talents as a comparison to what the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like. Now, the, the book of Matthew was written to specifically the Jews and the Jewish culture. And writing to the Jews and the Jewish culture, Matthew himself being a Jew, knew that the Jews would automatically sync up and line up with the term kingdom of heaven heaven more than they would the kingdom of God. So they are one and the same. They are interchangeable uh, descriptions, but I want to just point out that this book was written for the benefit of those who were steeped in Jewish culture. All right. So what Jesus is doing here is making a comparison to what the kingdom of heaven is like. If you've got your Bibles open to Matthew chapter 25, let's look at verse 1 as he begins to make comparisons. He first talks about the parable of the ten virgins. We're not going to examine the text. We just want to get the context. Okay. In verse 1, it reads, then the kingdom of heaven will be like, and he begins to compare it to ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Let's go fast forward to verse 14, the beginning of the parable of the talents. For it will be like a man going on a journey. What will be like? It, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God will be like a man going on a journey. Ah, stop right there, all right? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is about a journey. Mm, mm, mm. Right there, it gets good right from the get-go. Jesus is speaking in terms of taking a trip. Now, ain't that a trip? He's talking about taking a journey. And he called his servants and entrusted to them his property. Ah, he's speaking of a, a man who happens to be a master, a master of an estate, because he's got servants. He's got bond servants. Now, these bond servants are not slaves. They're not there against their will. They're there to serve, not under duress and stress, but they're there to serve because this happens to be a good master. Right? This happens to be one who, uh, they being poor and being impoverished rather than be on the street and kicked to the curb by their circumstances, linked up, connected, collaborated, and cooperated with a rich man and on his estate to be the rich man's employees. That's what I need you to see. Okay? They could have gone into somebody else's employment or perhaps not been employed at all and have no place to sleep, no place to eat, no roof over their head. You get the point. Okay? They were there as servants. Okay? And the man going on a journey entrusted to them his property. Verse one. All right, so what we see here is that in this regard, uh, Jesus is using a talent or talents, and we're going to go through this, uh, to compare, use it as a comparison, what the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like. If you want to get a view of what kingdom life is, if you want to get a view of what kingdom living is like, Jesus is, defers to talent. 
Ah, and, and in this parable of the talents, Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 30, I want you to read it and study it on your own. Over the next couple of weeks, I want you to study it, study it, study it. Uh, uh, seeing it once, reading it once, uh, that will bring awareness. Uh, reading it and studying it twice, well, uh, that, will, uh, that will bring um, uh, uh, some some habits. It, it, it might might make an impression. It might make an impression. Now, reading it and studying it three times, a third time, will make a difference. This thing is about repetitive, repetitive learning, okay? So what this particular parable does, it gives us principles to train to reign by. Principles to train to reign by. I'm speaking about reigning like kings, y'all. I'm, I'm talking about reigning as a royal priesthood, something that God himself referred to us as. We need to come up to the level of which he already described us as his chosen people, uh, those who are prince. Uh, who are, 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 are his royal priesthood, uh, princes, if you will, of, of, of priests. That is what he's called us to be. And we're not quite there yet. We're like kids with, on a bike trying to ride the bike for the first time. We've still got training wheels on our bike. We haven't graduated to that big English racer yet. We haven't graduated to the 10-speed. We're on a trike many of us. And some of us are on a, a, a two-wheel bike, but we got training wheels. We need principles to train so we can reign. That's right. That's right. All right. So now talent. In this particular context out of Matthew chapter 25, uh, it, it, it mentions talent in verse 15. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each, listen now, each to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Mm, mm, mm. I need to set the stage for dealing with what is talent because in 2017, it is necessary for us to get a grip on just what talent is because I do believe there are a ton of talented people, but they're just simply not getting any play. <laughs> they're just not getting any play, all right? So we need to revisit what is the biblical definition of talent. Talent. Well, in the Greek, uh, the word here in its use in the parable of the talents comes from the Greek word talanton, uh, which is a derivative of a prime word uh, called uh, talo, talo, which means, check this out now, which means to bear or carry in very wide application. I need you to get that. Right? The application is not narrow, it's wide. Now, in this particular text, what we tend to grab from it is that when, the, when Jesus is referring to talent, he's referring to money. Not so fast. Not so fast. Back up, press pause, and let's check this thing out. What is he really dealing with? What is the crux of the matter that Jesus is really speaking of? Remember, he spoke in parables so that folks who couldn't get it wouldn't get it. High pitch over your head. Let me bring it down. Jesus spoke in parables. This is according to him himself. He spoke in parables, taught in parables, so those who wouldn't get it couldn't get it. Okay, uh, You'd have to be spiritually discerning. You'd have to really want to know this thing to figure out. You'd have to cozy up to him, get him by himself. Uh, uh, Lord, Lord, wh what did you mean by that? That's what his disciples did. His disciples would, would cozy up to him after a teaching. And, Lord, can you break that down? Uh, that kind of went over our heads. And then Jesus would break it down exactly what he was meaning and referring to. So oftentimes what he gave out as far as a word 
he gave to those who would be in pursuit of discovering its meaning by discovering the word himself. Those who wanted to have a relationship with the word would get the word. Ah, those who seek me shall find me. All right. So the inquisitive, those who really wanted to know and be in relationship with him, uh, they'd be diligent about finding out what the word was all about. And the word was not just a word. It was the man. It was the God, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. So this word, this word for talent in the Greek, talantin, comes from a root word meaning to bear or carry in a very wide application. Literally and figuratively, it meant to, uh, uh, to be, to be, to be, to bear, like carry, to bring forth, to carry, to come. Man, listen to this, to drive or be driven, to drive or be driven, to endure, to go on, to go on, to lay, to lead, to move, to reach. Uh, it also refers to rushing and to uphold. That is the root word from which we get the Greek word talent. Okay? So if we go to the word that it was taken from, we get a lot to chew on because talent is something that, bear, that, that, that someone bears. In fact, talent is to be. All right? Talent. Talent is to, to be or not to be. That is the question. Uh, William Shakespeare, right? Uh, he was a man of great talent. The man could write plays. He could write prose. He was talented, a talented playwright, perhaps the most famous uh, playwright of all time. Okay? And to have talent is to be. Uh, God did not leave anybody out of the talent tree. He invested talent in you. Now, whatever it is you're, you're using it for, now that's a whole other conversation. But he put, it, put talent in you. Make no mistake. Perhaps your talent isn't to sing. It ain't mine either. <laughs> uh, your talent might not be to dance. Your talent might not be to tell jokes and make people laugh. Your talent might not be um, athletic. It might not be on the football field, the basketball court, or anything of that sort out on the track. That may not be your talent, but there's something. Something unique to you that God caused you to be and to bear, to bring forth, to carry, to come into this world, to drive and be driven by your talent. In fact, what is, what is one of the slang words we, uh, we use when somebody's got talent and it's on display? Somebody's up in church or uh, up in the club, whatever the case might be. And they are singing. I mean, they are singing the song, right? Well, what is it that some of us say, gone, gone? Well, <laughs> that's what the word means, all right? One of the translations of the word talent means to go on. Something that helps you and allows you to go on, to move forward, to move on up is talent. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talent, it also means to lay, to lead, to move, to reach, to uphold. Talent does all of those things. It causes us, when talent is laid on you, it causes you to lead. It causes you to move. It causes you to reach places that if you didn't have the talent, you perhaps never would have reached. It upholds you. Everybody's got talent. What is yours? Okay. The word talent itself in this particular meaning, in this particular rendering in the parable of the talents specifically refers to a balance as supporting weights. Mm, all right. A, a supporting weight, something that balances things out. All right. Uh, by implication, it means a certain weight, a, a certain, if you will, heaviness. All right, talent is heavy weight. Woo, heavy weight. It's something that God lays on you that you get from no other place but God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. 
And when God lays some talent on you, he lays it on you heavy. He don't lay it on you light. Whatever it is that God has invested in you that you don't know about yet, you've got some exploring of Christ Jesus to do, then he will reveal to you the talents and the gifts that he stirred up and put in you. Those gifts have to be stirred up according to the writings of the Apostle Paul. We're called and admonished to stir up the gifts that are within you. He told Timothy, his protege in the ministry, Timothy, make sure that you're stirring up your gifts, stirring up your talents. You've got to be involved in the involvement and involvement, the evolving of your talent. It is a connection, collaboration, and cooperation with the Lord Jesus who invested talent in you from before the foundations of the world were laid that makes you who you are to be. You may not quite be there yet. You may not have have uncovered it yet, but you tarry with him for a little while and hold him by the ankles and don't let him go. You wrestle with him like, like Job did. And don't let him go until he blesses you. You're going to bless me with letting me know what my talent is, Lord. I'm not letting go of you until you walk me into my talent. I'm not going to let you go until you release me into my purpose and let me know why I am here. Because that's what your talent is all about. Okay? So talent refers to a certain Wait, 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 something heavy. And and thus a coin or rather a sum of money was oftentimes implied by its use. The word talent, in fact, can even mean, yeah, talent, talent, uh, what you do well that perhaps someone else less talented or not talented simply can't do. You see, the word talent, it is a sum, a sum, or weight. Ah, And in that way, it is directly related to glory. Glory means weight, something that's heavy, all right, a heavy weight, a sum. Uh, The Lord himself, his glory is heavy. It's, it, 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 it's a weight. It weighs on him. It weighs on the world. There's no mistaking God's glory because of the sum and the weight of it. In the same way, the Lord God, dis, uh, he distributes talent into those whom he has chosen to gift and to give it, not for your benefit alone, but for the benefit predominantly and primarily of the kingdom of God. And what goes good for the kingdom is going to go great for you. So talent is a sum or a weight. And again, in that way, it is directly correlated to the word glory. And like time, talent is what we are ultimately responsible to God for, all right? Like time, talent is what we are ultimately responsible to God for. That talent is not yours. It is on loan to you from heaven to bring some heaven right down here to the earth realm. What are you doing with your talent? talent or talents. We're going to get into it. You see, talent, listen now, talent will either define you or refine you. Talent will either define you, it'll define you, or it will refine you. You see, there is absolutely nothing indifferent or inconclusive about talent. Either you got it or you don't. There's nothing inconclusive about it, nothing indifferent about it. Oh, she can sing a little bit. Oh, he can dance a little bit. A a, a little bit doesn't necessarily define talent. Either you've got it or you don't. Either you're going to be a superstar at that thing or you're not. But there's something that you're called to do on this earth realm that will that will put you into superstar status. Michael Jordan was born to play basketball, and he found his stage, and it was not easy for him to get there. He was cut from his junior high, junior varsity team, from his high school junior varsity team. 
had a whole summer to take off and work on his game. And somehow or another, he got cut as a sophomore. But when he came back his junior year, his game had improved to such a level that by his senior year, he was recruited by arguably the number one basketball program in college hoops, North Carolina. And as a freshman, helped take North Carolina to a national championship and win the thing. So something happened between the time he got cut as a sophomore to when he came back as a junior and a senior. You see, he got cut, but his cut led to his comeback. Uh, that's a word for some of us. There's some talent, some latent talent that's in there that's in you that you've got to work on. You've got to give God time to develop your talent, but your talent isn't going to be developed until you give God your time. Ah, Michael Jordan commenced to give giving basketball his time. He shot free throw after free throw. He took jump shots probably into the late hours of the night playing all by himself to try to raise the level of his game, raise up his talent, bring his talent out so that the next year the team he got cut from that was the team he made and ultimately starred on. Uh, that that that's that's somebody's story in the building tonight. That that's somebody's story. A latent talent that's within you that you just need to give God your time to help you develop your talent and set the stage for your comeback. You see, again, talent will either define you or refine you. You see. Michael Jordan's talent on the basketball court defined him. He was the greatest basketball player of all time. It defined him. Uh, Whitney Houston's voice defined her as a great singer. But if you've had failures on your way to being defined by your talent, you need to be refined so that your talent, thus refined, can then define you for greatness. All right, talent is not inconclusive. There's nothing indifferent about it. Either you have it or you don't. And when you do, here's what the Word of God says. In Proverbs 18, 16, a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before the great. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the the great. That is the word of God to you. All right? That is a promise of God. That is a promise, which means it's going to happen. If you give God your talent, if you give God the gift that he gave back to the giver of the gift, he said that he would make room for you and he would bring you before the great. Mm, mm, mm. All right, talent matters, the parable of the talents. What is talent? Well, let's look at the first mention of the word talent. I want to set the stage for this study over the next couple of weeks by defining what talent is is. Now, the law of first mention, the first time the word talent is mentioned, it's mentioned in the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 25, uh, dealing with the, the making of the golden lamp stand. This golden lamp stand, which would adorn the inner workings of the tabernacle. All right? Interesting that God would first mention talent in having to deal with the making of a golden lamp stand that would be used to bring light into the Lord's house, his tabernacle. Now we can relate and say this, let's connect the dots between the Old Testament and the New Testament. We know in the Old Testament the tabernacle was a tent, but the New Testament you are the tent, you are the tabernacle, and the Lord himself tabernacles in you, where once upon a time in the Old Testament, he tabernacled in the tent tabernacle. He now tabernacles in your heart. He tabernacles with your soul in your heart. You are his tabernacle. Now, let's relate this to the 
first mention of the word talent so we can get a true meaning of what it is God was dealing with and really speaking of when he uses and invokes the word talent. All right? Now, relating to the construction, the making of the golden lampstand, this menorah that would give light to the priests who were serving in the tabernacle, this is what it says in Exodus chapter 25. The, the reading comes from verses 31 to 40. I want to jump ahead to verse 39, and it says thusly, it shall be made, speaking of the golden lampstand, it shall be made with all these utensils out of a talent of pure gold. It shall be made with all these utensils, the, the working instruments, the instruments that would be used to serve in the temple, in the tabernacle, I'm sorry, in the tabernacle, uh, dealing with this particular instrument, this particular utensil would be made out of pure gold, a talent of pure gold, meaning that the gold to be pure, it had to be refined. It had to go through the fire. It had to go through the fire several times to burn out the impurities before this talent of gold could be used as a utensil, as a tool in the tabernacle of the Lord for his service. Mm. Verse 40, and see, listen now, and see that you make them after the pattern for them. Speaking of the golden lampstand, as well as the other utensils used in the service of the Lord in the Lord's house. And see that you make them after the pattern for them, which is being shown you on the mountain. Uh, he, the Lord God is speaking to Moses, and he's telling Moses and giving Moses instructions about those vessels, those utensils, those things that would be used in the service of the Lord, in the house of the Lord, how they were to be made. And in particular, this golden lampstand that would give light in the tabernacle so that the, the priests would be able to see what they're doing and how they're serving, how they're doing what they're doing, would be made of a talent of pure gold, gold that had been refined through the fire, put through pressure, and made pure by withstanding great heat. Mm, that's a word for somebody right there. And see that you make them after the pattern for them. There, did you know there's a pattern for you? Your, your talent, in fact, your talent has been made so that you could be instrumental in the pattern for service for the Lord. And that pattern was shown to Moses on the mountain. The same place he got the law, he got the pattern. The pattern for godliness, the pattern for purity, the pattern for holiness came from what he was shown through the law on the mountain. Mm, mm, mm. Isn't that good? Isn't that rich? That talent is referring not just to a, a, an amount, a sum of gold, a weight of gold, but it's particularly in this first rendering of its use. God is applying it to the vessel that is used in his service in his tabernacle. My, 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 my. My, my, my. Here, this word talent in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew is kikar, kikar. And it's from a prime root word, karkar, karar, karar, I'm sorry, karar. And that prime root word means, check this out now, to dance, to dance. Karar means to dance. And quite literally, it means to whirl like to whirl about when you dance and you whirl or you twirl, you twirl, okay? The Hebrew kikar comes from this word, and that word kikar actually itself coming from the, the, the uh, prime root word karar, meaning to dance or to whirl or twirl, if you will. Uh, kikar means a circle. Remember, this relates to the word Talent. In the Hebrew, the word talent is the word kakar, which means 
a circle, a circle. By it, but now, by implication, it means a circumjacent track or region. Now we're talking about real estate. We're talking about land. How do you get from talking about talent to talking about land? Talking about a tract, a, a circular region, a tract. Now, this specifically and especially refers to the Valley of the Jordan. That's what this word kakar actually uh, would be translated into uh, a, a circular or circumjacent tract or region of land or property, especially the Valley of the Jordan. Now, this is significant. Think about the Valley of the Jordan. To get to the Promised Land, where did the children of Israel have to cross? The Jordan. They had to go through the Valley of the Jordan before they went into Canaan. So before they went into the land that God promised them, they had to go through another land. Okay? Another land, and that land was the land of Jordan. Now, this word also means, stick a pin in it because we're going to come back to this meaning concerning real estate, tract, or region, all right? It, this word for, uh, for talent, kakar, also uh, can be used and translated meaning a round loaf, like a loaf of bread, L a loaf, all right? Now, think about who is the bread of life. Jesus Christ himself is the bread of life, the word, right? Uh, we, we call it the bread, the, the bread through which we gain our spiritual nourishment, all right? And it also means quite plainly also a talent, meaning a large round coin. So see, look at the duplicitous meanings of the word for talent, okay? Here in the uh, first mention, we see it being mentioned as a pure piece of gold, a, a pure weight or sum of gold being used in the service of the Lord. Mm, that's good. In the service of the Lord. The Lord creates talent to be used in and for his service. You see this word Talent. Talent was first used to describe the weight of gold in the making of the golden lampstand for the tabernacle. Now, check this out now. This golden lampstand was situated opposite the table of the bread of the presence. On the south side of the holy place uh, stood an ornate lampstand or menorah. And this menorah was patterned after a flowering almond tree, a flowering almond tree. It was an almond tree that not only gave off nuts, right? Not only gave off the, the, the fruit of, of almond nuts, but it also gave off flowers. It bloomed. It blossomed in season. And that's what this menorah, this golden lampstand was patterned after a flowering, blooming, blossoming almond tree. Not only was it good to look at and beautiful to smell, but it also provided something to eat, okay? And very healthy, I might add. Almonds are one of the most healthy food sources in our food supply, okay? Now, understand that this menorah, this golden ornate lampstand, uh, it provided light for the priests serving in the holy place in the holy place. You see, care was especially taken according to God's instructions to keep it well supplied with pure olive oil so that it would not be extinguished. The light that the golden lampstand gave, the light that the menorah gave in the tabernacle never went out. Never went out. All right, it was always supplied with pure olive oil, and we think of oil as relating to anointing. It was an anointing that was never extinguished, thus providing light for the whole house that never went out. Never went out. Great care was taken according to God's instructions. He left instructions on not only how to make the golden lampstand, but how to maintain 
the golden lampstand. That the purpose for which it was created, the purpose would never stop. It would never end. Its light would never be extinguished. How does that relate to your talents? Is your light shining for the Lord? Are you using your talent to ignite the Lord where people can see and glorify the Lord through and by and because you're using your talent, your gift for his glory? Whatever it is. Whatever it is, all right? The lampstand, now listen now, the lampstand is seen as typifying the Lord Jesus Christ, who was the true light that came into the world. So says John chapter 1, verse 6 through 9 and verse 8 through 12. You see, Jesus Christ himself, the word is the light of man. Right? He's the light of men. He is the ultimate illuminating talent. Ah, Jesus Christ was the world's most ultimate illuminating talent that gave light wherever he went because God, his Father, invested in him. He took down light that came from heaven and brought his light to bear on this earth as deity, as God in the flesh, he was the ultimate illuminating talent. No greater gift, no greater talent has ever walked this earth than the person of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, this is what Jesus says concerning himself and yourself, right out of John chapter 15, verse 5. Think in terms of your talent. And his. Think in terms of Jesus' talent, which was limitless, and yours, which is limited. This is what he says. I am the vine. In other words, I am your source. Out of me, you have growth. Without me, there, there is no growth, right? I am the vine. You are are the branches. You are, in other words, an outgrowth. He is the talent. You are an outgrowth of his talent. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, apart from my talent, apart from my supernatural abilities, Jesus is saying, you can do Nada. You can do nothing. John 15, 5. Because of his talent, if we are abiding in his, in his talent, and his talent is abiding in us, if we can't do anything apart from him, what can you do with him? Just think in terms of what limitations we're limiting ourselves to by not being connected to the vine and staying connected to the vine. This isn't just a Sunday kind of thing. This is a vine where you stay attached Sunday through Saturday night, through Sunday morning. You never lose the attachment, the connection, your collaboration and cooperation with the vine. Because if you stay with the vine and the vine stays with you, his talent is going to rub off on you. And because you are connected to the talent source, the true talent, because you are collaborating with that talent source, because you're cooperating with that talent source, you're going to have reason along with that source to celebrate. Your talent will bring celebration. It will bring you before the great. Right? That's what the Word of God says. Remember, this is his talent in you. Because apart from him, you can do nothing. His talent in you. You're crafted with purpose in mind that would not return back to him void. If we look at Isaiah 55, 11, it says that the, the word that was purpose, right? It was purpose. It was sent out and it did not return to him void. It did not return back to God void. The word, which is Jesus Christ, was sent into the word and it, he was sent into the word with purpose. He fulfilled his purpose and did not return back to his father void or empty. The word returned after fulfilling all that it was sent 
to fulfill. Why? Because the talent of God the Father was in him. He said, I don't do anything I don't see my father doing. I can't say anything I don't hear my father saying. In other words, I am a vine of my father. I'm a, a branch, if you will, of God the Father, and because of his talent, I bring talent to this earth. I bring the talent of my father to bear to the point where when Philip asked, hey, give us a break. Let, let us see let, let, let us see the father. If we've seen the father, hey, we're good. And Jesus looked at him after walking with him for three years. Philip, you mean to tell me you've been kicking it with me all this time and you don't see the father in me at work? Who else is doing these things? Who else is doing the healing? Who else is raising the dead? It is the power of God the Father in Christ Jesus and that same power, that Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, supernatural, dead-raising power is in you. The talent of Jesus Christ is brought to bear in the lives of believers who are brought to the throne of their own free will, empty themselves out before the Lord, and say, God, fill me with your talents. Mm, mm, mm. Not for my glory, but for yours. That they would see you at work in me. Ah, see, that's what talent is all about. Okay, that is what talent is all about, and that's going to set the stage for our next uh, next week when we dive into uh, the parable of the talents. I just wanted to set the table with regard to what is talent. What is talent? It's not just a monetary thing. No, it's ability that captures territory. Uh, see, that's how it relates to real estate. There is territory that the Lord has ordained that your talents will take you to. And without those talents being put in God's hands, you'll never see the benefit of the territory that the Lord has ordained for you unless you give the give God the giver of the gift of your talent and your time, both your time and your talents. Amen. Well, I don't think anybody's mad but the devil. We're going to wrap on that one tonight. Uh, understand we meet here every Tuesday night for approximately one hour. We begin at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, that's 9 p.m. Uh, Central time and 7 p.m. on the left coast, my coast, the west coast, 7 o'clock p.m. All right. We're dealing with Mantle Matters, the Mantle Matters webinar, where we're dealing with faith and finances, faith and finances. On every Wednesday morning, bright and early, we've got two prayer calls, two prayer calls. The Perspective Matters prayer call begins the first one at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The second one begins at 6 a.m. Pacific Time. Remember, there's a three-hour time difference. 6 a.m. Eastern Time and the second call beginning at 6 a.m. Pacific Time. Choose one, get on board, and be blessed and be a blessing. That is such a rich time in the Lord. You're talking about emptying yourself and giving. There is no better way in ministry that we give as a people. All can get involved in prayer, touching and agreeing together. And God certainly uh, blesses those times and occasions where believers come together to touch and agree on all matters concerning our lives. That the Lord said that if we touch and agree as to anything on this earth, he would do it for us. Amen? Then every Thursday night, every Thursday night beginning at 9 o'clock sharp, Eastern Time, 8 p.m. sharp, Central Time, and 6 p.m. sharp, Pacific Time, we've got... The Perspective Matters online Bible study, we got a new topic coming out this week talking about applying the kingdom, applying the kingdom. You do not want to miss this study because if you don't know how to apply the kingdom, you can know the word, but if you don't apply the word, you can't get kingdom results in your living and in your lifestyle. Come and get what the Lord is offering. All you got to do is just give him a little time, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. 8 Central, 6 Pacific Time, each and every Thursday night. Perspective Matters online Bible study right here. Same channel, 
same station. And on every third Saturday morning of the month, beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Central, and 7 a.m. Pacific Time, we've got, we're rolling out this month in the month of February, Saturday, February 18th, Mantle Matters Workshop. Yeah, we're going to get busy. We're going to turn, we're going to roll up our sleeves and dive into this thing, y'all. We're going to talk about the urgency of now. New rules of money. Money does not work like it used to work. And you need to know how the new rules have changed the game of how to use what God has blessed you with for gain rather than for loss. Some of us keep throwing uh, good money after bad. All right, we're, that's one of those things we throw around is money. When we get some, we throw it around. When we need some, we don't have none. Right? We're going to talk about the new rules of money and how to make money work for you in this new economy. That is Saturday, February the 18th. There's a pre-registration that is required, and registration closes on the Friday before the Saturday seminar, which would be Friday, uh, February the 17th. Registration closes promptly at Friday at 12 noon Eastern Time, the day before the workshop, okay? The charge is $20 per registrant. That is tax deductible because it's paid to uh, Perspective Matters Ministries, and you will be blessed by this information. We're going to put some uh, workbooks in your hand. You're going to roll up your sleeves and get busy, and it's going to bless you. Tell your friends, tell your family. They need to check in and be there. This is a four-part series, part one of Urgency of Now, New Rules of Money. This will not be available on video. This is not going to be available on recording. You got to be in it to get it, baby, all right? So come and, and, and celebrate with us. Uh, again, it is my pleasure. My name is Pastor Philip Lowe. This is Perspective Matters Ministry, and you can reach me. I am in Las Vegas. Uh, they call it Sin City, but we're going to try to turn this thing into Save City before all is said and done. Amen. So I need you to support me in this. Uh, our P.O. Box is 753962. That's in Las Vegas, Nevada, 89136. And uh, phone number is uh, toll free at 877-281-1580. You can reach us during business hours. You can also email me at philip.low at perspectivematters.org. And check out our website. Y'all got to tune into the website literally every day. We've got several blogs going. I just logged, uh, just created a blog for men uh, the pa over the course of the past week or so. It's called Man Matters. Ladies, you've got to plug your men in. Brothers, you need to plug your brothers in so we can get fed and grow and grow up into the spiritual maturity that God wants us to grow into to be real men in this real time. Amen? So check out PerspectiveMatters.org. Our blogs are We've got devotional uh, matters. We've got a relationship matters blog dealing with relationships and giving you some help and encouragement with your relationships. Uh, also, again, man matters. Man matters. I want to encourage my brothers in the Lord. Amen. 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 And you can always uh, reach us on Twitter and uh Again, I don't think anybody's mad, but the devil, it is good to be with y'all through this presentation. I pray that you've been blessed. Let's go before the Lord and pray out, and I will let you go. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this time together. Father, I pray, Lord God, that that which you have said and spoken and shown us today, Lord God, I pray that it will become a natural part of our spiritual being, that we will walk these things out and get the kingdom results that you have ordained for our lives that our mantle, which matters to you, will now matter to us in how we invest and use the time, the talent, and the treasure that you have so generously blessed us with. Lord, we are undeserving of your goodness. So we ask and pray that you forgive us, Lord, where we have missed the mark with regard to our time and talent, which is none of ours, but all of yours. We know that we're going to have to give an account for it one day, and we're repenting right now. We desire, and I know you designed and purpose for us to get in sync 
with your uh, uh, purpose for the mantle that you have given to each of us. Lord God, let your anointing flow fresh in us and on us. Let us be defined, Lord God, by the talents that you give, that you be glorified, and let us be refined as well by those talents, Lord God, that are under development and under construction. Let us be under your tutelage, O oh God, and teach us, O oh God, how to count our time and use our days wisely according to your will, your plan, and your purpose, and our talents also. These things we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Be blessed. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. Don't go to pieces. I'll see you on the prayer call uh, bright and early on Wednesday morning. God bless you. I love you in the Lord.